We've been talking about a new bridge for about 20 years and in the end, finally, they agreed that a bridge was needed and uh, here we are. The reason we're here is because the old uh, crossing, the Silver Jubilee Bridge, which was constructed in 1961, was originally designed for around 9,000 vehicles a day and is currently trying to handle up to 90,000 vehicles a day. The major driver behind the bridge was that it will open up communications with, with the rest of the roads network in the UK. It also gives a direct link to Liverpool Port and Liverpool Airport. Well, everyone talks about Mersey Gateway being about the bridge, but it's so much more than just the bridge. Um, the bridge is two kilometres in length when you include the approaches, um, but there's also seven kilometres of approach roads uh, that include 12 major structures um, and eight major highway junctions, any one of which could be a major project in its own right. The bridge uh, project as a whole starts uh, in Ditton, uh, which is on the Widnes side of, of the project and runs all the way across the bridge to the M56 Junction 12. This is a joint venture of uh, three parties. We've got uh, FCC, Samsung and Kia, all three who work in the global market. FCC have brought technical knowledge and expertise to the project. They have, of course, built cable stay bridges and large approach viaducts similar to this uh, worldwide. The joint construction venture has made it possible to contribute an enormous amount of international experience to the project. FCC's approach in all projects is to use this technical expertise to continuously improve quality. We have the support of the technical service in Spain, geotechnical service, design service, engineer. It has been a hard, hard issue, the design and the innovation of all that technical temporary activities. That mobile scaffolding system that we have applied in the main bridge with six form travelers, in the north and the south approach with two mobile scaffolding systems, two big machines of 70 meters. As you can see, just no water in the Mersey just now, so you can't use marine vessels. So we've had to build a trestle that gives us the access to and from, and that actually dictated how we built this, this structure. That together with major coffer dams that are built at the various pile locations to allow us to, to uh, go down 15 to 20 metres to build the foundations for the bridge are probably the main unique temporary works structures that were built during the project. Probably the greatest challenge has been also the coordination of an international joint venture team, more than 1,000 workers in different places, in such a challenging place, and as well as dealing with the adverse weather in the Mercy Valley. There's been various challenges uh, to date on the project. In the south, the uh, challenges have been more of traffic management and of dealing with the residents and local businesses. We're working over live traffic. Uh, we have to do a lot of night shifting uh, and move the traffic around to various uh, paths so we can actually work over them. We have our own environmental team who are based on site and carry out environmental impact studies for everything that we do on site. The, the area has been very heavily impacted by contamination left by previous industries. To date, we haven't actually had to send any material off-site, so we've actually been able to treat the material and use it back in the embankments during the construction process, which has been a real win for the project. The bridge really hasn't had a great effect on the environment, and uh, I think that's down to the care they've taken on looking after the environment while they're doing the job. The size of the project was always going to have impact on the local community, so we needed to bring them along with us on the journey. Uh, we applied to Mersey Gateway uh, through Time Bank for support, 
and the generosity that they gave us produced the fantastic play area we've got. It's helped the community because it's expanded the services we offer. Uh, the volunteers are a real lifeline for us. We've got 40 volunteers, they actually staff our visitor centres but they also go out and do the community engagement, they do our school presentations and that has been really, really successful. I think the volunteer programme is the biggest success of our community engagement on the project. I am so glad I have done this. The response has been phenomenal. We have had over 25,000 visitors. The kids have enjoyed it, the teachers have, the people I work with, and I feel very privileged to be involved in such a massive deal like, like this. One of the best things I've ever done. The response from the community has been very positive because obviously it's affected a lot of people's lives with all the work, and they are part of this, an historic moment, if you like. FCC, of course, is proud to work on such a major project in the UK. We want to use this knowledge of the market and this experience to win new opportunities in the future.